everybody, and welcome to Storytime with me, Miss G. Today's nonfiction topic for Storytime is going to be awesome. We are talking all things funny words, crazy adventures, and I am so excited. Today, we are reading a story about a man who is amazing. He is one of the most amazing authors ever. He wrote such great stories that children and adults still read today, and his name is Lewis Carroll. Lewis Carroll is a beloved author. He had some amazing poems and stories that he wrote while he was alive, and one very special story called Alice's Adventures in Wonderland. Maybe you've heard of it, maybe you've seen the movie, maybe you've read the book. It is a fantastic story about a little girl named Alice who goes to Wonderland and has some really crazy adventures. I love Alice in Wonderland. It's such a great story, such a great movie, such a great book, but he wrote so many other great things too. But Alice in Wonderland is still his most popular story. Lewis Carroll had a really interesting life and he even wrote Alice in Wonderland for a real person he knew. That's right, Alice was a real little girl. Lewis Carroll loved children. He loved to make them laugh. He loved to make them smile. He loved to tell them stories. And it's no different when he meets Alice and decides this little girl needs a story of her own. So we're gonna read all about Lewis Carroll today in this story called One Fun Day with Lewis Carroll. A celebration of wordplay and a girl named Alice. Lewis Carroll loved to make up his own words. He had words for everything and he loved to invent his own words. One time he said, when I use a word, it means exactly what I mean it to mean. And who knows where he came up with all these words, but he really did use a lot of crazy fun language in his stories. And we're gonna hear some of that today in this story. So grab a cozy seat and get ready, cause here we go. <laughs> with Lewis Carroll, a celebration of wordplay and a girl named Alice, written by Kathleen Cruel and illustrated by Julia Sarda. Lewis Carroll was an expert at fun. A day with Lewis was always fabulous and joyous, and as he would say, fabulous. Young Lewis could make everyone grin from ear to ear like a Cheshire cat. His 10 brothers and sisters adored him. He coaxed them into games of cards, chess, and croquet. He led adventures galumphing across the leafy wonderland of the English countryside. They found rabbit holes to peer down, toads and caterpillars to befriend, flowers to talk to, trees to climb. Their burbles of delight would brighten the Tulgy woods around them. Best of all, Lewis made up stories and drew pictures. His drawings weren't as splendid as his tales, but his siblings didn't care. His playfulness with words sent them all into a complete jabberwocky. Lewis started writing down his stories and poems. He loved to find new ways to make words play together on a page. Wow, wow, wow. Even after he grew into a prim and proper Victorian gentleman, Lewis still loved fun. He didn't want any child feeling mimsy in his company. To amuse the children of his friends, he kept closets full of mechanical toys and dolls. He took the children on trips to the circus or the theater or a Wild West show. He played games inventing new rules for extra fun. And he encouraged pranks such as climbing up a clock tower to strike the enormous bell at the wrong time of day. He sounds like a fun guy to hang out with. His young friends never knew what a day with Lewis would hold. Sometimes he'd propose six impossible things before breakfast. Should they draw ridiculous things like much of muchness? Should they try to soothe the jub-jub bird? Should they argue with the mysterious twins Tweedledum and Tweedledee? Should they beware the dreaded Bojum? Should they go on a hunt for the snark? Should they play with the vorpal blade as it goes snicker-snack? His words are so fun. I don't even know what they mean, but they're funny. 
Lewis ran races and gave unbirthday presents. He could even make schoolwork fun. Who knew that one could study reeling and rifing and that arithmetic could include uglification? As a fun day turned brillig, Lewis hosted picnics under the tum tum tree with tea and cold chicken. He always brought a basket full of yummy cakes, taking care to keep them away from the toves. Anyone who had to miss a fun day out with Lewis Carroll would be frumious. Then came one fine famous Friday in July when Lewis began to spin a story like no other. Rowing a boat with a friend and the three daughters of another friend, he began telling a tale about a girl named Alice. It was no coincidence that one of the girls on the boat was also named Alice. Perhaps she was sleepy from the sounds of the oars dipping and the water dripping. Perhaps she was feeling oofish. But now she cheered right up. A girl with her name had just tumbled down a rabbit hole. Such beautiful pictures. Alice is chasing the white rabbit. Lewis later admitted he had no idea what would happen next in the story. But on the spot, continuing to row the boat, he kept playing with words. In his story, Alice follows a white rabbit. She finds a bottle that says, drink me, and a cake that says, eat me. She keeps growing larger and smaller, sometimes nine feet high, sometimes three inches tall. In this crazy wonderland, all the animals talk, even the caterpillar, and so do the flowers and plants. We're all mad here. Oh, this was getting curiouser and curiouser. A pack of cards plays croquet using live hedgehogs and flamingos. Sea creatures dance the lobster quadrille while Alice interrupts a mad tea party. Everyone chants silly poems and songs as when a mock turtle croons beautiful, beautiful soup over and over again. <laughs> he makes up the wackiest things. I don't even know what some of them mean. It is so fun. Lewis his friends in the boat were glued to their seats, not daring to gyre or gimbal. Not even a bandersnatch could have distracted them. Lewis added details that kept the real Alice and her sisters beamish and also peppered the tail with things that would tickle grown-ups. He threw in breathless escapes and witty arguments about nothing and one slithy surprise after another. His brave hero, Alice, copes with it all until the very last minute. Then the pack of cards comes whistling down upon her, awakening her from this most curious dream. His friends rocking in the boat were wonderstruck. Was there a moral to Lewis's story? No, it was just for fun. Kalu Kale. Write it down, said the real Alice. She was 10 and like the Queen of Hearts, a bit bossy. So he did. Two years after that famous boat ride, Lewis presented the real Alice with a handwritten copy of what would become Alice's Adventures in Wonderland with his own illustrations. When he later published the story as a book with much better pictures by someone else, readers all over the world erupted in chortles. In no time, Lewis was rich, famous, and busy writing his second book about Alice, this time sending her through the looking glass. Lewis Carroll, the man who never forgot how to play, had turned a day of fun into stories that were fabulous and joyous, as he would say, fragulous. The end. Wow, you guys, I love that Lewis was so good at inventing words and fun things right on the spot that one day when he was hanging out with Alice and his sisters, he told them the most amazing tale. And that tale became a story that still goes on today. Everyone knows the story of Alice in Wonderland. Maybe you've seen the movies of it. Maybe you've seen different versions of the movies. Maybe you even read it in a book. There are stories of Alice all over the place. And I, for one, am so glad that Lewis Carroll had that idea that day he was rowing the boat with Alice and his sisters to send Alice on that crazy adventure in Wonderland.
Thank you so much for reading with me today and coming to hear my story about Lewis Carroll. I think he is such a cool guy and I'm so glad we got to learn so much about him and how he started writing one of the most famous books ever. I really hope you enjoyed the story and I will see you next time. Bye-bye. <laughs>